Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our kickoff for the Back to School Vaccination Week of Action. My name is Mary Wall. I'm on the White House COVID-19 response team and I'm very excited to welcome you all here today. As you know, the school year is right around the corner in many parts of the country and in some places it's already started. As we get closer to that time, it's more important than ever to get vaccinated against COVID-19. We know that the best way to protect yourself, your classmates, and your communities is by getting vaccinated. We are here today to highlight students who have taken initiative to improve access to COVID-19 vaccinations among school and college age students. Today, we'll hold a virtual roundtable on what young people are doing around the country to get their peers and communities vaccinated. So many of those watching today have been championing young vaccination, youth vaccination efforts for months now, including the nearly 900 colleges and universities participating in the White House COVID-19 College Challenge, and all the young people participating in the COVID-19 Student Corps and the COVID Community Corps. Through these initiatives and beyond, the White House, the U.S. Department of Education, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services are excited to work with so many organizations and individuals across the country to make sure that we get our young people vaccinated. Today, Mr. Douglas Emhoff, second gentleman of the United States, and Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and chief medical officer to President Biden, will offer brief remarks and then hold a conversation with six young people about their work getting their communities and their peers vaccinated. By highlighting the actions of these people, we hope that you are inspired to lead your school, community, or university to act to vaccinate their communities in preparation for the school year. I've had a chance to speak with these young people and let me tell you, I am really inspired by what they're doing and I can't wait for you all to hear about it. Mr. Emhoff, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mary. I really appreciate that. And hello, everybody out there. It's great to be here with you all today. Um, I've heard from Mary and others that you've been leading an impressive outreach to get your friends, families, and neighbors vaccinated. And you've been doing it all in really creative ways, which is great. So let me first by, let me start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to this conversation. Um, you've stepped up, you've done your part to help put this pandemic behind us. So thank you so much. Now I'm a dad of, of two kids myself. So I know the past 18 months have been incredibly difficult for, for all of us. And you, you've had to put pieces of your life on hold You've worried about your friends, your families, and getting sick yourself. And you've had to miss so many milestones and celebrations. And it's hard for all of us to see the number of infections in our country on the rise again. But we always knew that fighting this pandemic was going to be a marathon and not a sprint. And I know you're in this with us until we get this done. Now, over the past six months, you have all helped our country achieve significant progress in the fight against this pandemic. Now, take a minute to think about that as of today, more than 165 million Americans have been fully vaccinated. Each one of those people now has the same peace of mind that I have that comes with knowing that they're protected from getting seriously sick. Now, when our kids, Ella and Cole got vaccinated, it really was one of the biggest reliefs that we have felt in a very, very long time. We knew that they were going to be okay. Now, I want every parent and every young person to, to be able to feel the same way that we felt and breathe that sigh of relief that, that we did. And I know you all feel that way too. Now, with the Delta variant spreading, and impacting our communities in a way that previous strains of the virus have not, it's now more important than ever that we finish this job. And that's where all of you come in. Over the past few months, 
I've spent a lot of time out on the road checking in with people all over the country, I think 24 or 25 states. I've visited vaccination sites at churches, barbershops, stadiums, and schools. I saw firsthand how important it is to meet people where they are and bring vaccines to those places. I've met pastors, doctors, volunteers, community organizers, teachers, students, parents. I met them all. And I saw how impactful it is to have trusted messengers, people just like you, sharing information with their peers about vaccines. It really works. Now, while we've made significant progress, we all know there's more work to do. There are a lot of people out there who still need and must get vaccinated. And as young people all over the country head back to school over the coming weeks, we have to put a special focus on getting our youngest Americans vaccinated. So that's why today the administration is announcing a week of action from August 7th to August 15th to get more young people vaccinated before they head back to school and back to campus. Students, educators, parents, and community members all across the country will be working to get more young people vaccinated. They'll distribute information on campus, make phone calls, talk with their friends and family, and host pop-up clinics, which are great. In fact, last week, President Biden called on school districts nationwide to host at least one pop-up clinic over the coming weeks. Now, next Monday, I'm personally looking forward to hitting the road to visit a clinic and a school and to meet with community leaders in Kansas. So, on behalf of the entire Biden-Harris administration, thank you so much for everything you've done, which is amazing, and everything you're going to continue to do to help heal our country. We are so proud of all of you, and I'm looking forward to learning more about the incredible work you've been leading. But before we get to that, we are so fortunate to be joined by the great American, Dr. Fauci. I'm gonna turn the call over to him for an update and some inspiration. Dr. Fauci, take it away. Thank you so much, Mr. Amhoff. It's great to be with you again, particularly you. joining this really terrific panel Thank of you. young individuals who are gonna be doing some extraordinary things to help themselves and help their peers and help our country. As Mr. Emhoff had alluded to, we are really at a very critical point in this pandemic because we're dealing with a very formidable variant, the Delta variant. That's really different than the variants that we had experienced in, let's say, six months ago when we were dealing with a variant that was much less able to transmit. This is a formidable foe. It's a variant that has a high capability of transmitting from person to person. And it has taken over as the dominant variant in the country. Just a few months ago, the Delta variant accounted for about one to 2% of the variants that circulated in the country. As of yesterday, that has gone up to 93%. So that's the reason why we're seeing these surges that have been really extraordinarily problematic Yesterday, there were 104,000 cases in the country. Just a month or two ago, we were down to about 15,000 per day. Clearly, we've got to get this under control. And the solution to that predominantly is a vaccine. And let's talk about that. We have enough supply of vaccine for anyone who wants it. They are free and they are safe and they are effective and easily accessible. You know, we figured it out that for nearly every American, not every American, but nearly every American lives within five miles of a place where you can get a vaccine. That's very important. That's why I'm excited to learn about what you're going to be doing in your community is namely getting people to get out there and to get vaccinated. This is extremely important work. The reason it is so important 
is that we have 93 million people in this country who are eligible for vaccination who have not been vaccinated yet. And many among them are young people because we've done a really good job of getting the elderly vaccinated. More than 85% of them are vaccinated, which means when you look now, relatively speaking, the people that we really have to get to are the young people. And as the second gentleman stated, we're kicking off a back to school week of action this weekend, and we really want to hit the ground running. So we want to get young people vaccinated, students to get them back to school because we know of the deleterious effects of children who cannot get to school because the schools are closed or, or, or having virtual. We want them in person in school. And the only way you can do that is to make sure they are safe. And you do that by getting everybody around them vaccinated. If you're old enough to get vaccinated, you're 12 and, and above, get vaccinated. If you're too young to get vaccinated, you want to get the people around them vaccinated. So that's the reason why the work that you were doing is so, so important. So thank you so much for that. You're a very important part of the process of keeping this country and ultimately the world safe. So enough of me. Let's get started. So Mary, should I ask the first question? Let's do it, Dr. Fauci. <laughs> okay. See you tomorrow. Your work with the Mi Familia Vota organization is focused especially on the Latino community. What have been the most effective ways to ensure that your community gets vaccinated? Thank you, Dr. Fauci. Um, yes, I am a vaccine program organizer for Mi Familia Vota here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And as an organizer, I looked through online data to find the zip codes which have the highest rising COVID cases and the lowest vaccine. Um, rates. And from there, I target small local businesses, usually owned by Latinos, and offer to vaccinate their employees at their work site. Mm. And as a daughter of immigrants myself, I know that parents will often have more than one job in order to support their families with basic necessities, you know, such as shelter, food, and even their education. And because they have more than one, one job, or have to um, get back-to-back -back shifts, so they might not have enough time and cannot afford to call off work to get vaccinated because that would be losing money. Um, and that is why our vaccine program offers to vaccinate employees at their work sites so they don't have to worry about anything else but just getting vaccinated. Um, and so we have a phenomenal canvassing team that goes door knocking door to door at apartment complexes and neighborhoods um, where vaccine outreach is low. And so they hand out flyers for upcoming vaccine pop-up events that we have um, and it'll be occurring in their surrounding location. And we invite them to attend these events. And what's great about our canvassers is that they're sharing their personal stories about why they're getting vaccinated and they answer any questions about the vaccine that they may be having. Um, and if they choose not to get vaccinated, we still offer them, you know, and ask them why they're not getting vaccinated so we can collect that information and that data and create a plan that's going to allow us to tackle those barriers. Um, and those barriers are important to assess because that helps us as an organization, as a team, um, you know, meet those necessities that they need so they can get vaccinated. Um, if they're facing a language or a transportation barrier, we're more than happy to offer them rides to any vaccine event in their area. And what's great about our team is that we're all fluent in Spanish. So they feel more comfortable getting vaccinated when someone who looks like them is right there by their side, ensuring them that they're not alone. Thank you. That's terrific. Really terrific. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm up. Braden, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So you are a COVID-19 outreach and organizing fellow with Planned Parenthood, right? Yes. Wait, I sound like a lawyer here. Sorry. Okay. So what tactics have you found to be most effective in the outreach that, that you've been working on? And thank you for everything you're doing, by the way. Thank you. And thank you so much for the question, Mr. Emhoff. Uh, let me start by saying that I am both deeply honored and humbled to have the opportunity to speak with you about this topic. Uh, I want to take a moment to thank you both and the entire administration for your leadership as our nation navigates this unprecedented crisis. Uh, you've brought a certain empathy and humanity back to the White House that has not gone unnoticed. Uh, to answer your question, and while it may sound simple, the single most effective tactic that we've found is boots on the ground action, 
uh, having those honest conversations with the people around you and quite frankly, listening to the people and hearing their fears and concerns with an open and empathetic mind. It is critical that we meet people where they are to understand where they're coming from and why they may be hesitant to get vaccinated in the first place. I recently had a conversation with some family members about the importance of this work. Uh, it is important to remember that a lot of this work is rooted in the history of medical racism. Uh, this work aligns so well with Planned Parenthood's greater mission and their unique position to reach populations that might otherwise not have access to accurate medical information and quality care. This is reflected in the fact that the Planned Parenthood Federation has invested itself in conducting this work nationwide with this fellowship. And look, the message is clear, right? Young people, particularly in communities of color, need access to scientifically accurate information from trusted messengers like their peers, organizations like Planned Parenthood, so that way they can make informed choices about their health. Let's be frank about this. This country has a deep-rooted history of medical risk racism that has led to hesitancy and mistrust. That must be acknowledged when we're having these conversations. This is particularly true within our service area at Planned Parenthood of Metropolitan New Jersey, where the overwhelming majority of our patients are people of color. This issue is something that's very deeply personal to me. The concerns are real, they are valid, and they are largely rooted in fact. We, have all, we all have an important part to play to dispel this misinformation and to regain the people's trust in leadership and in science. It won't be easy, but I believe that we have a once in a generation chance to make a change and to create a future that is just and equal for all. Don't ever sell yourselves short. We do have the power to change the course of history. But in order to do this, we must share accurate, equitable, and culturally responsible information that is backed by science. We've missed out on proms, on graduations, concerts, traveling, holidays, but we don't have to keep missing out on these things. The choice to act is ours, and the time to act is now. We now have the power to step up and do something about it. It's time to gear up, get informed, get vaccinated, and share your story with people around you. Our words have impact, and opening this dialogue can and will save lives. I often think of the words of President Biden and that we should lead by the power, the example of our power and not by the power. We should lead not by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. So that's a, a good thing to go forward in this work about. Thank you again for this opportunity and thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you, Brayden. Dr. Fauci, back to you. Okay, Chloe, uh, the work that we've been doing has been especially focused on native Hawaiian and Pacific Island teenagers. So how have you successfully communicated with this community about getting vaccinated? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fauci, for the question. So I am a member of a student-led panel called Nakamli Talk Story, and we host a monthly digitally streamed panel that elevates youth voices and works on spreading accurate and pressing information to other young people and community members. Our format suited the pandemic environment well because we operate digitally and we have found that this is a very effective way to communicate and engage with masses of people. This work we have been doing is so important in exposing students to community leaders and various networks within Oregon and in other states. Additionally, learning from experts and these community leaders are providing us with the proper tools to go and educate others about the topics we discuss. This was especially important when we founded the panel back in 2020 and even now, because the youth were being exposed to so much new information about the virus through social media, or because many of us were at home, we learned uh, about things and we had to process them in isolation. We were left with many questions and concerns that were then relieved when we held our very first panel back in June 2020. Being able to include young people in conversations such as these has been our top priority because this new generation of world leaders needs to at some point be prepared to fill that role and involve ourselves in issues that affect us and those we care about. We held our second COVID-19 panel in July 2021 with Dr. Bonner of the CDC and Dr. Richard Lehman of Oregon Health Authority focusing on the vaccine. We were able to go over why people might be hesitant to take the vaccine, the evidence behind the vaccine safety and effectiveness, and how to approach somebody who might be hesitant to take the vaccine, among other things, with the goal to assure people that the vaccine is the best and most necessary way to combat the virus. We've not only been able to communicate with our community members, but also our parent organization, Ka'aha Lahui O'Olekona, Oregon and Southwest Washington's Wide Civic Club, in partnership with Oregon Pacific Islander Coalition, 
has been successful in putting together various vaccination sites. And on Saturday, they are holding a festival focused on maintaining health and providing more vaccines to those in the community who re remain to receive their COVID-19 vaccinations. I believe that the way that we have operated so far, educating and informing the community, and then following that up with a space for our community members to then take action themselves has been the most effective way to get people vaccinated. Well, thank you very much. Very impressive, Chloe. Very impressive. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Back to you, Mr. Amhoff. Okay, Aaron, you're up. Teens for vaccines. You uh, represent the our 12 to 15 year old group, which has the, I think, the lowest vaccination rate, as Dr. Fauci was talking about earlier. So, can you talk about teens for vaccines? How you're getting young people involved, and why it's so important to have your age group vaccinated. Yeah, so first off, thank you, Mr. Emhoff and Dr. Fauci for this, this opportunity. I am really excited to be here. So hi, my name is Aaron. I am four, nearly 14 years old. I live in California and I am the founder of Teens for Vaccines, a youth collective. Right now, we are working with teens around the country, all fighting for one thing, to crush COVID. But we can't end COVID if teens aren't part of the conversation. So my teens for vaccines thanks the second gentleman and Dr. Fauci for creating this moment so we can talk directly to teens, parents, and school board members who are watching on what we, we are seeing firsthand and what action is needed. First off, I want to give a big shout out to all teens for vaccines ambassadors in California, Tennessee, Illinois, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Missouri, Maryland, North Carolina, and more. We are in the trenches reaching out to teens in every possible way. Young teens like me need to get vac vaccinated so we can protect ourselves, our little brothers and sisters, our grandparents, and those who are immunocompromised and living in fear. The Delta variant has been raging across our country. Our heart goes up to Kaya Morris, a healthy 13-year-old from Arkansas who caught COVID and is fighting for her life on a ventilator. And there are many more like her. Personal stories are extremely powerful motivators. So vaccinated teens, please go out there, talk to your friends, your family, and your neighbors about getting about them getting the COVID-19 vaccine. And right now, we all want to crush COVID, but information is not reaching all teens. Also, teens aren't part of the conversation. Instead, they, they are on TikTok exposed to videos about how they will be turned into zombies if they get the vaccine, or they are on Reddit searching for answers. We can do better, and if I may be frank, we must do better. So at Teens for Vaccines, we are sharing trusted sources from the CDC, as well as immunization coalitions, organizing town halls so teens get their questions answered. We share personal stories, give advice to teens on how to convince their parents, and even clarify minor consent laws. The only way to increase teen vaccinations is to involve teens. In fact, we recently consulted with the state health department to engage student organizations in their own outreach efforts. In fact, Teens for Vaccines has actually partnered with a Generation Up, a 4,000 student member strong organization and protect us to mobilize students to lobby their school boards so students have access to vaccines as well as safe learning environments with masking being a top priority. We are even planning peer-to-peer -peer events, doing more community canvassing, especially in rural and underserved areas. Teens, if you are watching, talk to your parents, your doctor, your friends, cousins, and neighbors. Get your COVID-19 shots. And please don't forget about your other five routine vaccinations, your Tdap, your HPV, your men ATWY, your MEMB, and your flu shot. Let's do everything in our power to crush COVID and get our lives back from this horrible, raging pandemic. Parents, if you're watching, please talk to your teen. They want to be heard and be part of the decision to get vaccinated. School board members, if you're watching, please promote the COVID-19 vaccine as well as routine vaccinations in your school. And Dr. Fauci and Mr. Emhoff, you are our heroes, but we need to know our government will protect our right to live by making vaccines easily available to teens, by making masking a top priority and protect our right to education. Ultimately, we just need this country to see us teens. Thank you. Wow, Aaron, thank you so much for that. Very inspiring. Dr. Fauci, back to you. Thank you, thank you. Kelly, you started the organization Vax Teen 
after seeing your fear, your peers face barriers to vaccination. What are some examples of these barriers and what has been your strategy to address them? First, it is such an honor to be here and to be speaking with you both and be joined by such incredible other young people. So thank you so much. But I think it's really interesting. I actually started vaccine before the pandemic um, when I just happened to come across a post from a peer on Reddit who was talking about how their parents um, really were very scared of vaccinations, um, but how they wanted to be vaccinated and how concerned they were for their own health and this they wanted to feel safe, but also the health of those around them. And I was struck by this. I was really in awe. I think when we talk about vaccinations, we really, and the anti-vaccine movement, we don't really talk about young people as having really their own opinions about vaccines and being part of this conversation. And so I, I, when I realized, and I was so inspired by all of these posts and questions I then quickly found and came across, and I realized that significant barriers were preventing my peers from being vaccinated, even if they wanted to be. And so I think namely it's really a need for parental consent, as well as accurate, accessible information and resources. And so I think entering this pandemic, these gaps have become all the more clear and these issues really all the more important. And so I think studies do show that a majority of adolescents perceive vaccines as safe and effective, and that they're eager to be involved in this decision-making process. And so vaccine is really based in a recognition of their desire to do so, acting as a much needed public health campaign to educate teenagers about vaccines. And like everyone here, we're, it's, we're created and run solely by young people. And so vaccines message really resonates with this, since our audience is the same people behind the vaccine. And I, we're really, I think, focused on meeting young people wherever they are, whether that's on social media, in schools and colleges, through educational curriculums, the peer-to-peer -peer campaigns of our ambassadors, and in clinical settings. We empower them to make well-informed decisions by providing easy to understand, accessible resources. We reach those seeking vaccines and really and educating those who aren't yet as well. And so I think something that CMR said really struck out to me. She talked about all these barriers we face, right? That so many people do want to be vaccinated, but they have to be at work. And I think we also have to recognize the disproportionate impact that the pandemic has had on very on racial and ethnic minorities and specific communities and how they face the greatest access barriers. And I think we also have to recognize that their kids are also feeling this, that a parent potentially, can, even if they want to vaccinate their child, they may not be able to take them. They may not be there to provide consent. And so I think we, as well as those parents who may not feel very positively about vaccines, that their child does know them best. They understand why they're hesitant. They know how to really explain to them why they should be vaccinated. And so I think we really do need to recognize the role of young people. So actually just yesterday, um, I was on Twitter and there is a hashtag trending, it was hashtag leave our kids alone. So it was started by those who did not want to vaccinate their children. Um, but I was so inspired because it has since been co-opted by young people who said, yes, we do want to be left alone, but we want to be left alone to make the decision and get vaccinated. And I really think every day my work for vaccine leaves me inspired and in awe of my peers. There, there are certainly barriers we're facing in convincing young people to be vaccinated, often as a result of a pervasive spread of misinformation about vaccines. But I think it's clear to me really how vital vaccines feel to most of my generation. They're our way back to normal, or they make us feel safe, which I think we all have a right to feel, as Mr. Emhoff said about his own children. Um, they're our way back to school, to seeing our friends. It's our way of protecting our communities. And so I think we should look at these barriers that are facing and preventing very willing young people from being vaccinated and allow them to be part of this conversation about their health and about the health of their communities. Um, I, they do, they're, not only do they know their parents best, but they're also the next generation of parents in their own right who will be making decisions like this in the future. And so I think the COVID-19 pandemic has really served as a startling public health lesson. We each have a responsibility, clearly, to prevent the transmission of disease, whether through vaccination or social distancing, to ensure our collective health. Obviously, vaccines only really work if we're all vaccinated. And so I think as we push for increased immunization, Teenagers can and should have a role to play. And I think it's very important that we recognize that and look at these barriers of 
access and consent and all these things that are preventing maybe young people from having a voice and look at how powerful their voices can be. Thank you so much for the welcome to be here. Thank you very much, Kelly. I really like the response of the teen on the, to the tweet that says, yes, leave us alone <laughs> to make our own mind up. <laughs> Terrific. I like that. Back to you, Ms. Damhoff. Thank you, Dr. Fauci, and thank you, Kelly. V, how are you doing? I am doing great. How are you, Mr. Amos? Good. So you're working as a Philly teen vax ambassador. So thank you for that. And I, I see here that you have an interest in a biomedical career, which is amazing. So what are you uh, doing out there to get young people to get vaccinated? And how are you best uh, communicating and debunking misinformation? And, and as, as I like, you've, you're all saying crush COVID. I love that. I'm going to start using that. All right, so thank you, Mr. Emhoff and Dr. Fauci. It's a great honor to be here, honestly. So for most young people, I believe in order to trust the vaccine, the key thing is to first be informed about it, meaning know what is it and what is not in it. Many of the myths surrounding the vaccine are based on misinformation about its contents. The vaccine contains the mRNA message to make the spike protein, lipids, also known as fats, salts and sugar, that's it. No magnets, no microchips, and it cannot access your nucleus to change your DNA. Another thing I think teens should know is that by taking the vaccine, they are helping protect their loved ones and their community. Being a part of the first group of teens to get vaccinated helps set out a great example for their own family, friends, and even to our country. We, as in our youth, can help influence perspectives to make changes we want to see starting from our own communities. As for communicating with the teens, we have used various social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and our most prominent platform, Instagram. On there, we promote our events by using attractive flyers and making TikTok videos on providing the facts about the facts through using today's trends. From what I've seen as a teen ambassador, the youth have their own sort of language. So it's best if teens talk to one another since we can understand and relate to each other more. By canvassing throughout our neighborhoods on foot, we get to meet and connect people on a personal level. At the end of the day, it just boils down to being transparent, authentic, and simply being able to talk to listen to them. Our role at Philly Teen Vax Ambassador is to simply provide the facts so they can get the vax. Hmm. Thank you, V. That's great. Thank you all so much to our panelists. I know we are, I think we're about at time for our panel, so I'm going to hand it back to Mr. Emhoff for the final word. Wow, this was so inspiring. I have to tell you, I, I took a bunch of notes. I'm going to use a lot of this information uh, as I always do, whenever I do these events, I always learn something and then take, we take it back to the administration and we turn it into um, better messaging. And I've learned a lot of how to do that. Um, and some of the things that, that you need to hear and your peers need to hear to get vaccinated. Um, I also want to thank um, Made to Save, uh, who has been working so hard on this project as well. Uh, so I've worked with them. And um, uh, d just you are all an inspiration. I think our future is very safe in your hands. But I want to end with thanking Dr. Fauci, an American hero, a patriot, who has selflessly dedicated his entire life to public health and helping his fellow Americans and the rest of the world. So Dr. Fauci, on behalf of the country and the world, thank you so much for who you are and all you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Damoff. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be with you on this very important discussion. And thank all of you guys. You're, you really are. I join Ms. Damoff in saying you are our inspiration. And as far as I'm concerned, you guys are the heroes of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fauci. Thank you, Mr. Emhoff. Uh, what a discussion. Thank you, all our panelists. So happy you were here.
We're going to transition now to the second half of our event. And as part of that, I would like to introduce a couple of individuals from the organization Made to Save, uh, one of many organizations around the country, like the ones you've heard from today, who are participating in initiatives with the White House COVID-19 College Challenge, the COVID-19 Student Corps, and the COVID Community Corps to help get people vaccinated. They will lead a training for us today on relational organizing so that all who are watching can go out and take action. Don Boudwin and Ariel Vassar will join us from Made to Save. And as a reminder to everyone, we invite you to take action with us. All colleges and universities can join the COVID-19 College Challenge by visiting whitehouse.gov backslash COVID College Challenge. And you can join the COVID Community Corps and the COVID-19 Student Corps at wecandothis.hhs.gov, where you can also access a ton of really helpful resources for talking about the vaccine with your friends, family, and communities. Don, I'll kick it over to you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mary, and thanks to all of you for being here. We know you can be a lot of places, but we appreciate you taking the time out to have this conversation with us. I know Ariel, Ariel and myself are excited to be able to speak with you about how to talk to your friends and family about the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, so, but before I uh, get into that, I do wanna take a second just to talk a little bit about Made to Save. Next slide, please. Um, we are a national public education and grassroots mobilization effort to build trust in COVID-19 vaccines and increase access for communities of color whose health inequities have been exacerbated by the pandemic. To learn more about our efforts and to also uh, get resources uh, for the work, please visit madetosave.org. Um, now I'll kick it over to Ariel to tell us why it's important to talk to your friends and family about the vaccines. Thanks so much, Don. So why is it important that we talk to our friends and family about the COVID-19 vaccines? So research shows that more than one third of people who did not want to get the vaccine in January 2021 that ended up getting vaccinated so that they spoke with someone who persuaded them to get vaccinated. Conversations among family and friends are five times more effective than conversations with strangers. And you, whether you're an educator, a teacher or a student or a trusted me messenger within your community. Uh, next slide, please. Um, these conversations are important because there's a lot of misinformation, disinformation about the vaccines and our friends and family may not know where to find reliable or accurate information. But as someone who already knows them, you are a trusted messenger about the vaccine and you can help them guide, guide them to a decision because we all have a role to play in ending this pandemic and getting back to the moments that we miss most. Great, so how do we actually have the conversations about the COVID-19 vaccines? Next slide, please. Here's our main approach. We're not telling people what to do or what to think. Um, we, want, we don't want to shame people. This decision is deeply personal, so we're not forcing them to do anything. Uh, we want to make sure uh, the conversations that we are having are meant to guide people and support them to make an informed decision. Um, we have several helpful resources on our website. So I know a lot of folks think that you have to be a healthcare expert. That is not the case. Um, but if you need those facts to help you as you're navigating these conversations, you can find it on our website. But you as a trusted messenger can still make a huge impact through the conversations. You don't have to have the latest stats um, and statistics. So next slide, please. I want to tell you a bit about the TEO method, um, which are our guiding principles for conversations. We generally don't give a script for these conversations because we know that every conversation will be a little bit different. Um, but we do think that these three components are um, essential to include in each of your conversations. So first, for T, we want to build trust. Um, for E, we want to express empathy. And then for O, we want to help folks find their own reasons. We're going to dive into each of these a bit more, so I'm going to kick it over to Ariel to talk about trust. 
Um, so for building trust and understanding. So first, before you give health facts or encourage people to get vaccinated, we want to build on the trust that's already existing and understand where they, where they are coming from. This means that we should always be asking people a lot of questions, ask them to share more about their concerns, ask them to share what they've heard and what, where maybe that's coming from or where those concerns are coming from, um, and try to get to the root of where the, and what their main concerns are by asking a lot of questions and figuring out their perspective. Next slide, please. Thanks, Ariel. Um, as I said before, expressing empathy is one of the key components. Uh, getting vaccinated is a really important and personal decision and that we all have to make for ourselves. So when having these conversations, you have to acknowledge people's concerns and questions are valid. Even if you disagree with them um, or if you had different concerns while you were going through your vaccination journey, it's really important to help people know that their um, feelings and concerns matter. So the tough part, which I'll acknowledge, is that you um, have to respond without passing judgment and avoid making assumptions. So, um, for example, if someone said to me, you know, I've, I've um I've heard, I have a lot of concern about the side effects. I would be like, you know, I've heard this from several folks um, and what you're communicating to me is that you wanna make sure your body's okay after you get the vaccination. That shows that you're actively listening and that you're um, acknowledging their feelings, which is a really key component of having these tough conversations. Next slide. And lastly, you want to help them find their own reason. Research shows that people are more likely to do something when they have their own reason for doing it. People get vaccinated for a lot of reasons, whether they want to protect their family, protect themselves at work, travel, just go out and be a young person again. And so we need to help our own friends and family find their own reason. Um, part of what you can do when you're doing this is by sharing your own reason for getting vaccinated. For example, if I was talking to someone and I was helping them share their reason for getting vaccinated, I would talk to them about how I personally got vaccinated because I'm immunocompromised and I wanted to be able to go out in the world as a young person again and feel safe and hang out with my friends and do all of the activities that I wanted to do without worrying about getting sick because I am higher risk than a lot of other people in my age group. And so you can use that question and use your own prompt to help them find their own reason and identify what getting vaccinated can mean to them. Next slide, please. So just a review. We're doing three things in every conversation. We're building trust, uh, we're expressing empathy, and we're helping folks find their own reason to get vaccinated. Next slide, please. Just know that your conversation uh, could go have a range of outcomes. Some of them will be magical and you'll get right to that point where that person is inspired to go get vaccinated. Other ones you may have to revisit later on. So when, if they are interested and ready, help your friend or family make a plan. Um, if they're not quite there yet, just make, make an effort to check back in later. Keep, a, keep the door open so that you all can continue the conversation. Next slide, please. And before I go, I know that there are often um, barriers to access around the vaccine, so we wanted to provide some of the most common um, barriers that we're hearing and potential solutions for them. So. I will say like we hear a lot about people being concerned about the cost of the vaccines. Sure, you can share that the vaccines are free for everyone and at no cost. Um, a lot of folks don't know where to go to actually schedule their appointment. So one of the things that we share is the hotline or uh, direct them to vaccines.gov so that they can find a local vaccination site for them. If there's lack of transportation is an issue. I think one of the conversations you could have is to offer a ride if you're able to, but also if you can't offer a ride, maybe you can help them map out um, public transportation, how to get to where they need to go. You may be having conversations with folks that are undocumented. You can share that vaccines are available for everyone regardless of their immigration status. Similarly, you may talk to folks that are uninsured um, and you might wanna just highlight that they're free regardless of if you have insurance or not. And lastly, which is a really real one, is that folks may be working long hours or have a lot to do with extracurricular activities. You can help them find a, a vaccine site that has extended hours. So the last thing that we're gonna talk about is how you can keep track of your conversations about the COVID-19 vaccines. 
Uh, next slide, please. And one of the things that we use is a tool called Reach. It's a grassroots organizing app. You can text your friends and family. Uh, you can use our guides for talking to friends and family in person. Uh, you can post on social media. And you can also log conversations to follow with people later based on how those conversations went. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so getting started with Reach, there are three ways to download um, our dashboard. You can either go to madetosave.org slash reach and create an account and download the app from there. Um, the other way to do it is to download the app directly from your app store. It's called Reach Progressive Organizing. You can use our code up on the screen, um, MDWD37. Um, and from there, you can um, add our dashboard. Uh, please note that that code is not the same as the security code that Reach will send you to verify your identity. Um, and then the third way to join is a current user can invite you to join. Uh, you'll get a text with a link to uh, create an account. You can download the app from there, and you will not need an invite code um, to join if a current user invites you. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so how do you use Reach? Um, you can use Reach to talk to your friends and family. Um, the first step is to click on one of our action cards. You can see our template for texting friends and family. You can select your preferred platform, and then the message will open in there. You can use it in iMessage, in WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, whatever works best for you. Um, you can edit the template as needed if you want to like change up the message a little bit. Um, and you can send it as many times as you would like. You can send it in a group text. You can send it to a bunch of friends individually. You can send it in an email, whatever works best for you. And after you've send, sent the message and had these conversations, you can enter the data and add these people to your network so you can log how these conversations have gone and follow up with them um, in the future. Next slide, please. Um, so for back to school, we also have a few more specialized scripts that people can use. If you're a student, if you work at a school, if you're a parent, et cetera, um, we have more specific guidance and scripts for you. Um, so for students, we have scripts for you to talk to other young people. We know that the way that a lot of teenagers speak with each other is very different than the way that your parents might be speaking with each other. So we have specific scripts for you to use to talk to your friends. We also have parent-specific scripts, um, as well as a guide for how to navigate these conversations with your families and with other parents and other concerns that they may be having about their families and their children. And we also have a guide for um, school staff workers, for educators, for teachers, about how to navigate these conversations within a school setting and building upon those relationships that are already existing and that trust that already exists between um, you and either parents or students within your network. Um, so next slide, please. And I'm going to pass it back over to Don to talk about our gift card giveaways. Woo, I get the fun stuff. Um, yeah, just to wrap us up here, I just wanted to let everybody know about the gift card giveaways that we're also be doing for folks that are logging um, conversations within Reach. So make sure that you're logging your conversations and we'll be able to track it there. And we'll also be able to offer between 50 to $250 for the top five people. Um, so this is really exciting and we're excited and thankful for all the work that you're doing to get folks vaccinated in your communities. And I'll kick it over to Mary. Awesome. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Thank you, Ariel, for that great training. As we close, I want to share a few words. Um, as Mr. Emhoff and Dr. Fauci stated earlier, there are a lot of people out there who still need to get vaccinated. And as young people all over the country head back to school and campus over the coming weeks, we have to put a special focus on getting our youngest Americans vaccinated. The only way to get out of this pandemic and to get back to school as safely as possible is for everyone who is eligible to get the vaccine. This Saturday begins the week of action to get more young people vaccinated before they head back to school and campus. From August 7th to August 15th, organizations nationwide will go out into their communities to get more young people vaccinated before they head back. We want you to be a part of this week of action. From hosting pop-up clinics, to distributing information on campus or at school, to making phone calls or texts, and talking to your friends and family, students, educators, parents, and community members across the country will be working to get more young people vaccinated. We hope you will join us. Visit madetosave.org backslash back to school to sign up and commit to taking action, and visit wecandothis.hhs.gov to sign up 
for the COVID Community Corps and the COVID-19 Student Corps and get access to a lot of great information and resources for your community. Please also tell us what you're doing using the hashtag WeCanDoThis. We can't wait to see what you all will do. Thank you to the incredible young people who are virtually with us today sharing their stories. And thanks to everyone for attending. Let's get moving on the back to school week of action.